Hey guys, this lesson will focus on the crowding in effect. Now we talked about the crowding out effect in the previous lecture, but this video will focus on the opposite of the crowding out effect, which is the crowding in effect. Now we know that the crowding out effect is where uh, where public spending actually depresses private sector spending because of push of how it pushes interest rates up. But the crowding in effect is where budget surpluses or even contractionary budgetary stances contractionary budgetary stances may encourage spending okay, this is particularly the case when the government stops borrowing from the private sector which may encourage spending it we're going to use the same demand supply side analysis that we used with uh, with the crowding out effect, and we're going to analyze how budget surpluses, which which actually are intended to be contractionary, how it could actually encourage spending, which is not the aim of what the budget of the budget surplus um, what it intends to do to the economy. So it doesn't intend. Uh, to encourage people to spend, it encourages people to save and encourages people to stop spending so as to achieve uh, the economic goals or to um, make the business cycle uh, closer towards the trend line. Okay, so we're going to look at this in terms of our supply and demand analysis. So as we know, the x-axis is national savings or investment and the y-axis is the real interest rate denoted by R. So we have an upward sloping national savings curve and this is because as interest rates increase we can see that people have a greater incentive to actually save and therefore national savings increases. Again we have a downward sloping demand curve but as we know we don't refer to this as demand uh, as such we refer to this as investment spending because investment spending is derived from the amount of national savings there is and so investment spending has a downward sloping uh, demand curve because of the fact that as interest rates go up businesses have less incentive to um, invest because to invest they need to borrow money and because interest rates are so high by borrowing money that would mean higher repayments and therefore which would detract or eat into profits and so with the current national savings we can see that the equilibrium we're just going to call this at R1 and the equilibrium investment spending undertaken by businesses at I1 okay so what happens here is that the government is uh, encouraging a contractionary stance. So we know that aggregate demand equals C plus I plus G which is G1 and G2 plus net exports which is X minus M. Right? So we know that's the formula for aggregate demand. And we know that when the budget is in surplus or is contractionary we see that this component here G1 and G2 this has decreased and if all else is constant this would theoretically mean that aggregate demand here would decrease and therefore move towards a more uh, steady rate of economic growth or a sustainable rate of economic growth so that inflation isn't compromised however assuming that previously the government had borrowed to fund for this budget deficit this means that they have less need to borrow from national savings and that national savings can return to its normal rate at NS dash. So that would mean national savings has increased because the government isn't borrowing from um, from the national or the private domestic savings pool. So what happens here is that slowly we can see that the economy will move towards a new equilibrium. So initially we will see that investment is at I1 and the national savings is at, I'm just going to call this 
NS1. And as we can see, because national savings exceeds investment expenditure, and because the financial sector doesn't actually want funds to stay idle, they only want enough funds so as to maintain liquidity because that means they're foregoing an opportunity cost of lending out the money, they're going to decrease interest rates and therefore they're going to decrease interest rates here. And when interest rate decreases, that would mean a movement along the investment line. And when interest rate decreases, investment spending would actually increase. And so a new equilibrium has been met at I1, I2, I should say, and R2. And we know that because investment spending is again a component of aggregate demand here, this has actually increased. And assuming that this has the same effect as government expenditure, these two effectively cancel each other out. However, if we look at this analysis further, we can see that credit for the private sector is cheaper because of this decrease in interest rates. And what this means is that consumption spending would again also increase. So because credit is cheaper, because it's easier to obtain, and therefore households would have the incentive to borrow more credit and to spend now when the interest rate is low for larger purchases such as houses, um, cars, or even just credit in general to make smaller purchases or a, a large variety of small purchases that they weren't able to make when the interest rate was high at R1 there. So what this means is that although the government tries to steady or lower aggregate demand by this contractionary budgetary stance, the opposite effect has occurred due to this crowding out effect. The aggregate demand in fact has been stimulated because of this increase in both consumption and investment spending due to a decrease in the interest rates. So that's how the crowding, of, crowding in effect has an inverse or a contradictory relationship with budgetary policy budgetary policy